Now, I bet you've been told that when you want to hit this golf ball, you want your shoulders to be square. I'm going to talk about if you do this the wrong way, how that could be throwing the brakes on your swing speed, how it could cause a chicken wing, and for you to get all arms when you're trying to hit the driver. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple swings. I'm going to talk about the idea of keeping my chest a little bit more closed. And then Q's gonna read some of the flight scope numbers, see what the swing speed is doing, and I wanna talk about the pros and cons of opening versus closing with your shoulders and which is right for you. All right, so let me go ahead and jump in, in, in and hit one here. And the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have this sensation of keeping my shoulders square. And we've probably all heard this before. We feel like as we're coming down to contact, if I'm looking from down the line, my shoulders could kind of be pointing toward the target. The idea is that if my shoulders are pointing straight, I'm gonna hit it straight. If my shoulders are pointing to the right, I'm gonna hit a little bit of a draw. If my shoulders are open, I'm gonna hit a little bit of a fade. We're gonna kind of bust that myth a little bit here, but let me go ahead and start to swing some and, and see what this means. So, what I usually see players doing is not opening enough with their body. So as you come into contact, I see a lot of this where the shoulders are closed, trying to hit that draw, but look how my hips haven't opened very much. My chest or my shirt buttons, my rib cage, however you want to think about that, is also pointing toward the ball. And when I do that, when I don't open with my body, what ends up happening is I have to push across the body with my hands and club and arms. So I'm trying to generate swing speed by pushing the club across my body. I get that chicken wing and I tend to get a loss of club head speed. So let me go ahead and hit one like that. I'm going to swing and try to keep my body kind of square to the ball. Again, that idea of hitting the draw and let's see what happens. Yeah, so I kind of pulled it. I really felt like the face was closing down very quick. It was kind of hard to time up the exact sequencing of that. I feel like the next one I may have hit straight, then maybe one to the right, then the left, kind of all over the place. But Q, what was my club head speed? And you know, what was my total distance, my carry distance, those kind of numbers? Uh, so club head speed was 94 miles per hour. Uh, total distance was 243, but it only carried 187. Not really your best strike there. Yeah, so it's kind of like a low hooking rolling shot. So it really just kind of rolled most of the distance, but only only carried 190. Again, let me go ahead and try to do that again. I'm kind of locking the body, keeping everything square to the ball, and then I'm kind of pushing across with my hands. Very, very common. I see this all the time. Yeah, and again there, I felt like I tried to not hook it to the left. And again, my club face is going from open to close. It's just so much arms. I really can't square it up very consistently. What was the numbers on that one? So 95.9 miles per hour in the club head speed. A uh, total distance uh, was pretty much the same, 241.6. Okay. So we see how inconsistencies can happen when that's going on. We see how that doesn't necessarily give me a draw every single time. We see how it slows down the club head speed a lot. So what's the truth behind this? What should we be doing? Well, in reality, what we wanna be doing is opening up the body a little bit as we're coming through contact. So as I come through contact, my hips should be opening up. I'm using the momentum of my body to get, my, get everything rotating on through, and then my hands and arms are releasing out in front. If I look at my rib cage, so if I get rid of my, my hands and arms, if I look at my rib cage as I'm coming through contact, it's actually pointing out in front like this. So my ribs are opening up, my sternum is opening up. That's what the best players in the world are doing. Their rib cage on average is about 20 degrees open to the golf ball. Now what gives the illusion that my face or my shoulders are square is because I'm in this position and then my left shoulder protracts or drags across my body to make everything look pretty square. That looks really square when you're going from down the line, but if I take my left arm, you'll see my rib cage is actually open. So your body, your big muscles of your body, my legs, my hips, my entire upper body all the way up to my shoulders is square or is actually open my left arm is just protracted, kind of cinched across my left pec there. If you want to feel this yourself, put your arm straight out and then drag your arm to where it's kind of across your chest like this. You'll feel it pinching against your, your left bicep. That's kind of where you're at at impact. As I bend forward and open up, that's basically the impact position. So that's the reason it looks more square when you're looking from the down the line view. So let's go ahead and do one more here where I go ahead and open up like I should be and let's see what those numbers change. Again, I'm gonna feel like I can really swing hard and release on out in front when I'm doing this. There we go, I actually missed hit that one a little bit off the toe, but we're gonna see the swing speed's way up, the distance is way up. It's gonna be a totally different shot. What are the numbers on that one, Q? 
Uh, club head speed 120, total distance about 307. Okay, so it picked up you know, 20 something miles an hour swing speed, driving it you know, 50, 60 yards farther, whatever. We all get that it's going a lot farther when I do it that way. We all get that that looks like a much better swing and we understand that the hands and arms aren't kind of flipping when I'm doing that. So the big question, how the heck do I do that? What do I need to feel? Well, a big piece of that is what we talked about with the left bicep there and the left pec, your left arm. So if I grab my chest and I have my fingertips kind of under my armpit here, I want to feel like I have my left arm across my body until I'm kind of smushing my fingertips. So if I'm looking at the, the bicep, the inside of my left arm and my pec or this muscle here that's your chest, I want to feel like that's really tight. Like if I tried to pull that out of there, I couldn't get my hand out. It's cinched in there really nice like that. That's the feeling that you want to have when you're coming through contact with your left arm. So as my body rotates open, I'm really tight and connected there. You hear pros all the time talking about being connected. That's the feeling that they're having. This is nice and connected. The shoulder's sturdy, it's tight. This is gonna control my face angle, control my hand path. That's why I was getting those shots that are going all over the place. My face angle was all, you know, left up to its own, you know, momentum and that kind of thing when I didn't have this connected. Now that I have this connected in, I can really be a lot more consistent. Also, when I'm doing this, the second swing key is, as I rotate on through, feel like everything is facing the target. In your mind, if you're one of these players that doesn't get open enough, you want to feel like at, at contact, you're like this. So your hips, your shoulder, your chest, everything's facing the target. And in reality, it won't be. In reality, it's going to look much more like what you would see the pros doing, where I'm really opening my body, getting my hips to clear out of the way. So if you keep that left armpit connected, if you feel like at contact, you're facing the target, it's going to lead to a whole lot more consistent shots and a lot more swing speed. And even better, it's gonna get rid of that chicken wing with your arm pushing across your body. Let's go ahead and try it out. There we go, that was a lot better. Right down the left center. Numbers are gonna be pretty good on that one. So what did it say on that one, Q? Uh, club had 120, total distance went all the way up to 343. Okay, 343, I'm not gonna do much better than that. Now, Q, this brings me another question that I have all the time. You know, when I'm talking about this with players, I get them to open up more. I get rid of that chicken wing, but sometimes the ball starts to go out to the right. What would you recommend if players start to slice when they're doing this? Right, so a lot of times when we get to where we're opening up the body, what happens is when we're, we're opening up the chest, the arms and the hands and everything are gonna come out with us because we're used to coming in. If you come into where everything's nice and, and square, club face, chest, everything uh, is really square to the ball, we're used to bringing that club kind of out in front of the body there. And if we keep that same relationship that we're used to, that we're comfortable with, when we're opening up, now we're just gonna come over the top. Yeah, just like that, we're gonna be coming over the top. So what we wanna do is we wanna feel, have that same feeling like what Clay was talking about. You have the arm really cinched to the chest. You really wanna feel like it's really pushing up against your chest here. And that's gonna help you keep the club behind you more so you can swing more on plane because if you don't, that's where those big slices or pulls are gonna end up coming from. So how about you hit one where you're really trying to put all those things together, where the club's really coming from the inside nicely. Okay, yeah, so where he's showing there is, if you keep doing this motion, you're almost gonna feel like with this new swing that you're getting way back in here, the club's coming away from the inside. But in reality, when you open up more, that's gonna be nice and square. So let me go ahead and hit one. And now we'll have kind of all the pieces. You'll be opening up, you're getting rid of the chicken wing, you're adding the club head speed, but now with that arm cinched and the club feeling like it's well in here, now when you open up, it's gonna be square. You're not gonna get those slices. So let's go ahead and try one out here again. All right, hit that one well. So the numbers are gonna be really good on that one. Basically square face, square path. I opened up my body but then I also got that club coming from the inside. That way when I opened up, everything is nice and straight, not going left. So what were the numbers on that last one there, Q? 119.6 uh, club head speed, total distance was 327. Okay, awesome, so hit that one really good, nice and square on it. Now let's recap on what we need to do here. Number one, we have to get the body opening up. If you're one of the players that stands up, everything's too square, maybe the chicken wing, feel like at contact, your body is facing, Notice how my body's rotated around here, my hips, my shoulders. You're gonna feel like this at contact. It's never gonna happen 
that's not anywhere near where you're really gonna be, but that's the feeling that you're gonna have. Number two, I want you to feel like, so you can come from the inside, this left bicep is pinched against your left pec. If you tucked your hand under there, you almost couldn't yank your hand out. That's how tight it's gonna be as you're coming into contact. And then number three, the idea of feeling like you're swinging way to the right is actually the right idea for you because as you start to open up more, that's gonna be square, nice and straight through the ball and you're gonna have so much more clubhead speed, the distance is gonna go way up. Now in this video, we talked about how to get speed through the ball, how to keep everything rotating through, but it also matters how much you load up, how much I turn back. I have to get my hips, my shoulders, my club really loaded up so that I can get this power through there. If you do both of those, that's when you see the really big hitters. The guys that are driving at 30 and 40 yards longer in your local foursome, and you just can't figure out how they're doing it, they're making a big turn going back and through. Well, I have some great tricks that are gonna allow you to do this, even if you're not flexible at all. I'm gonna play one of my best power turn, previews of one of my best power turn videos. All you need to do, click the card that pops up in your screen. If you don't see the card, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. You're gonna get instant access. You're gonna pair what we learned here, making that big turn, you're gonna start bombing the ball. The correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's going to allow us to have a lot of power. So we don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power, and we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos, and I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now here, we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're gonna see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.